welcome to my paradise. So as you guys all seen, we got the launch monitor set back up. We redid the shop, did the floors and walls. I did take this all down at one point. So just to give you guys a little tour of what's going on here. We'll start off by the canopy. I got an eight by, I believe 15 foot enclosure. I have just a basic backstop here, but I did put foam all around the poles for just a little added protection. I went through a few projectors, trying to get these short throw projectors. They get pretty pricey. This is about the biggest screen I have so far. Eventually, I wanna get one that fills up the whole screen, but this'll do for now. To the projector, I have running off my iPad here. So the iPad, you have to pull up the SkyTrack, goes up to the projector, that's what shows in front of you. Down to the floor, I just bought some cheap stuff here. Just to cover underneath, I got the foam padding. I bought some of those foam puzzles off Amazon, just filled all the bottom so that when the ball lands, it doesn't come flying back in your dome. To my hitting mat, this is like a couple hundred bucks, but it's very quality. It's really nice to hit off of, and it's very thick. Hey, thick, boy! Went and bought myself a ball holder, and then of course, the star of the show, got the SkyTrack launch monitor. This SOB comes in at about three grand, but I would say that this is probably the best product out there on the market for the bang for your buck. You could get three grand for a pretty decent launch monitor, or you can spend about 20 on the top of the line stuff. The SkyTrack does quite a bit, shows your carry, your total, has launch angle, spin numbers, ball speed, and of course your shot tracer. I definitely would not say that this is 100% accurate. All my yardages seem to be a little bit shorter than they actually are out on the course, but it's not bad. The spin numbers are pretty good. Seems like my launch angle is pretty good. It's just kind of those carry numbers and total yardages. They're not bad. They're like a few yards on irons. Drivers probably, I'd say the most off it gets is about 10 yards. So it's really not bad, but I've actually hit on the track man too. And my numbers have been off on those as well. So we'll just hit a few here and uh, show you what it's like having a launch monitor. What a idiot! That sucked. So I'll just hit some shots with some different clubs in my bag, and then we'll go through and I'll do a what's in the bag. I'll start off with, uh, let's say, a 75 yard shot. We'll see how accurate it is. Should be perfect. All right, there you go. Carried it 74 yards. Let's go with like a 100 yard shot. It says I pushed it. All right, 88. I'm gonna give this a full swing. I hit my sandwich 110, and I guarantee I won't even get close to that. All right, so my alignment is a little off. So there you go, 94. So wedges aren't really reliable, which is a bummer, because wedge work is super important. We're jumping up to a seven iron now. If I flush it 100%, usually hit it about 180. Oh, I definitely push that. Didn't hit it great. Pushed again. One last seven iron, I'm giving up. No question about it, I am ready to get hurt again. There we go. That was hit good. And that is another issue. Sometimes it just does not read it. And it's always on the ones that are flushed, I swear. You gotta give it one more shot. There we go, that's another good one. All right, there you go, 182 carry, 194 total. Guess we'll bump ourselves up to a three iron here, see what happens. 217 carry, didn't hit that one great. It reads stingers pretty well too. Oh, somehow I got no roll out of that. We're gonna bump ourselves up to a hybrid here. We carry this about 230 on course. 234 carry. One cool thing about feedback with a launch monitor is my last ball I carried 234 and I had 140 ball speed, but that one I obviously pushed and overfaded it and I spun a lot more, so that's why that happened. I didn't look at my spin on my last shot, but I could tell you right now that I spun a lot more. That's definitely a positive of having a launch monitor is getting to know your numbers. Let's hit a little three wood off the deck here. That should come out low. 248 carry, seems about right. Didn't completely flush it, but didn't hit it terrible. Let's just roll over to the driver and show you that I can't carry it longer than 275, no matter how hard I hit it. 
There you go, 269 carry. 156 ball speed. Definitely did not flush that by any means, but didn't hit it that bad. There we go, that was hit very well. All right, 283 carry, 165 ball speed. All right, we're gonna try to really nuke one, but that one was hit pretty freaking well. That one wasn't hit bad. A little low on the face, but hit hard. Whack. There you go, that's what it's like to have a launch monitor at home. Pretty cool, like I said, you can get some numbers, get some cool stuff off of it. Uh, whenever you wanna just keep loose, keep the swing going, bang some balls around. Put quite a few videos out now. Just wanna show you guys what's in my bag. It is May of 2023. I am rocking the Vokey SM9s, 56 and 52. I stamp these myself. I'm all about hitting bombs and slaying moms. And then from my 48 degree, which is like a mega gap wedge. Pitching wedge through three iron. I'm rocking the Titleist T100Ss. Absolutely love these things. These things are so clutch. I'm running the AMT X100 white. In all my uh, iron shafts, the midsize Golf Pride Tour Velvet with I think, I think five or six wraps underneath. I like my grips extremely thick. For two iron, I rarely use this thing. This is also a Titleist, it's the U500. If I'm competing or playing in tournaments, you'll notice that I have, I believe, two extra clubs in my bag. So the two iron comes out, and then depending on what course I'm playing, if it's a long course, I like more longer sticks in. The real short course, the three iron will come out. If it's a really long course, I kind of mess around with my wedges. I might take my 48 degree out and really practice with my pitching wedge on what my 48 does before I go into competition. As for my hybrid, rocking my cool little fishing head cover from Scotty Cameron. I'm running the TSI-2. Forgot what weight is in the head. I like this thing, it's not bad. I'm running the Acra. Uh, I don't know much about this shaft, I got fitted for it. As for my three wood, TSI-2. Did purchase a TSR-2 and just wasn't hitting that as well. I'm extremely picky with three woods. They're hard for me to hit as it is. If I find something I like, I'm sticking with the three wood. Running the Fuji Atmos Tour Spec 75 gram shaft. I also got fitted for that as well. I need to learn how to work on my, my ferrules and attaching club heads and stuff because a few of my ferrules are starting to do that. It's really annoying. As for the driver, got my Lion head cover. Rocking the new TSR3 weight one over to the draw setting. Really, really enjoyed the new TSI and TSR series. Titleist made a huge jump with these. These are, uh, these are really amazing drivers. If any of you guys know equipment very well, I'm sure you've seen my auto flex in here. I'm running the SF505 double X. So this is the stiffest one they make. These shafts are not cheap. I got this right when the big hype was coming out about these. I think with the ferrule on it, it costs me about $8.50 for this shaft. I declare bankruptcy! But honestly, I didn't gain any distance, but I really, really gained accuracy with this thing. So that's why I kept it in the bag and didn't sell it. I actually really enjoy this shaft. That's what he said, right, guys, because of gay? But that was the whole scheme with these auto flexes is you're supposed to gain a ton of yardage from them. And last but not least, the putter. See me rocking this head cover a lot. This is probably one of my favorite gamers. This is the limited edition Motley Crew from Scotty Cameron. I'm sure most of you have seen my short with all my head cover collection in there, but I rock about 20 to 30 on the course. Just purchased this not too long ago. This is the brand new Scotty Newport. Really like the design of this thing. This thing's pretty sweet. I had some Circle T weights laying around, so I threw those babies in there. These are 30 gram weights. I really like my head to be stable as I go back and forth through my path. So I do like a heavier head on my putter. Running the stock grip for now. These are called Pistolini grips. I do have a Pistolero grip that I wanna put on here, but I just haven't done it yet. I like a thicker grip on my putter as well. I just really like the design of this, so I haven't been in a rush to uh, change it out yet. And as for my old bag, it's a black and red mid-size staff bag. Got my ball sack here. Scotty putting disc, an abundance of towels. This is a uh, Hothead Harry towel. Got my name on the bag. I know there's a lot of mixed opinions about that, but I don't really give a f 
Oh, just take it easy, man. I'm gonna put my YouTube logo right down there. For my rangefinder, I'm running the Bushnell Tor V5 Shift. I like this because you could shift it back and forth. For tournament play, you're not allowed to use slope. And I really like the magnet on it, too. You could stick this to the golf cart. But yeah, nothing really uh, too crazy. A little fishing rod. It's my water bottle with all my Scotty stickers on it. There's stupid Cooper. As you can tell, I am a Scotty junkie. I just need $200. As for balls and gloves, those come a dime a dozen. I don't really care what gloves I'm using. As for balls, I only use Pro V1 and Pro V1Xs, preferably Pro V1X. Like the higher flight, higher spin on those. It's my divot tool, Scotty USA, big flag guy. And this is my current ball marker I'm running. This is the new 2023 Scotty. Get lucky horseshoe, had to have that. And the final thing I'll show you is my yardage books. I know you guys have seen these out on the course with me. I bought these from Stracaline. They do almost any course, but these are like $110 a book, but they're super helpful. They last forever. I've had these things for a long time. This has a really detailed look of, get out of here. It'll show you what exactly that green is doing. And other than that, that is about it, guys. There is a look inside my bag. I uh, try to change out my wedges every six months. Sometimes that doesn't go as planned, according to my bank account. Anyway, that's it, guys. There's a tour of my bag. There's a tour of my launch monitor. Hope you guys enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun putting it up. It actually went way easier than the first time. Assembling this thing was such a pain in the ass. Oh, I didn't show off my putting green either. Really like this putting green. I've been through a lot of putting greens. This one is by far my favorite. This is the most realistic turf. I've dealt with. Can't remember the name of the company. All right, that'll do it, guys. I'll probably do some, uh, some short lessons on the launch monitor. Want to do some more detailed stuff. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.